Jesus grew up as a boy until he was a young man, right in this area called Galilee. He grew up in a little town. It's called a city, but it's really more of a village. Um, right about here called Nazareth. Okay, so let me spell that N-A-Z-A-R-T-H. He grew up there. It's a pretty small count town. Probably 175 to 200 people live there. It's not very many. Um, and then right up here was the capital of this area. And it was right here called Sepphoris. Now, it was the capital until 20, Anno Domini, 20 years after the birth of Christ, approximately. And then Tiberius right here, okay, right there, was the new capital. But Sepphoris was gorgeous. It had like 50 mosaics and all sorts of carved, um, beautiful artwork throughout throughout the streets and such. And right here, I'll, I'll spell that, it's S-E-P-P-F-S-E-P-P-H-O-R-I-S, -S, Sepphoris. Okay, right there. That was a capital. It was a really big city. I mean, they had all sorts of things, a bath, a public bath, which is kind of crazy, but it's a Roman-built city. It got destroyed in 4 BC. BC is over here. AD is over here. Um, before Christ, it was destroyed. And then Antipas, Herod Antipas, I write his name, kind of built that city back up, kind of rebuilt it. Antipas. This is the son, one of the sons of Herod the Great. And it, it, this is his territory. Another one was up here called Perea. But anyway, so what happened is he built that up, Sephorus. And I believe it was only four miles northwest of Nazareth right here. And, and Jesus right here, I believe maybe, you know, traveled though as a young man or even younger. It, it was built probably in his childhood, rebuilt, and also in the young, as a young adult. And what's, what's really interesting about this, I'm getting somewhere here. Um, is that right here, there was a big amphitheater, a big theater, actually, and it seated 3,000 people. It's pretty big, pretty big city here. And um, they had acting going on, drama and such. And one of the things they did um, was they wore masks. Okay, so they took something, maybe not like this, but a mask, and they, you know, theater, a lot of times they have masks on. Well, that's what happened at this point. Um, at, at Sepphoris, and maybe Jesus, you know, heard of, or maybe saw one of the plays there, one of the acts there, and he saw people doing this, and he remembered that as a little boy, or maybe as a young man, and when he went out and started preaching to people and teaching, for example, the Sermon on the Mount, this is the first time, at least recorded, where he started talking about you hypocrites, or or he wasn't saying hip, you hypocrites, that's later in the Bible, but what happened is um, he started saying, don't be as hypocrites. And they knew what that was. It's a Greek word meaning hypocritus, which means play actor, pretender, stage actor. And so, <laughs> this is so powerful. And so he says, don't be like these guys. The first thing that we just mentioned earlier was the fact of almsgiving, you know, giving and acting like, you know, well, to be seen to people, they wanted everybody to see how wonderful they were. And then the next thing that he's talking about, this is the next thing that's very, very powerful. He says, do not be like the hypocrites who prayed to be seen by men. You know, they prayed like, you know, like I said, oh, and they started praying and all, and they were fake prayers. God doesn't like fake, by the way. I don't either. And so what happened is they, they started praying, acting like they're holy and godly and pious. You know, pious means, you know, godly and holy. And they, and they started praying these prayers in front of people. He said, don't be like those who, pray in, who love to pray in the synagogues, the church. They would stand right in, in the front and they, they'd do all these long prayers. That's another thing that he mentioned later, long prayers. But he, they started praying. And then he said, even on the street corner, although that wasn't a usual act of Jewish people, maybe a few did it, but maybe he was kind of exaggerating, basically just go out and show off your prayers. When you pray, do you try and show off in front of people on how you're praying? you know, what type of prayer you are. That shouldn't be the feeling of that. And they wanted to do, do it to be seen of men. And now it's not wrong to pray in public, um, but are you doing it to show off or to show how you can pray or something? It's not to be seen of men. So many prayers are in pr public, Old Testament and New Testament. But the problem was he was attacking the hypocrisy of fake prayers and not really praying from the heart and also to be seen of them. It's kind of a basis on pride and, and trying to make people see you. She so says, don't be like that. 
he said, um, what, what he wants is for you to pray privately. That's what's really important. Private prayers, public prayers are both powerful, but, just, but Jesus is emphasizing the fact of praying where only God sees you, praying to your Father who sees in secret. So he says, when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen of men. See, that's the big issue here, to be seen. You know, watch, look at me pray. You know, ugh. He said, I tell you the truth, they've received their reward. It's the same thing that he said, if you remember one about almsgiving, giving, you know, that's their reward. What? To be seen by men. That's all they're going to get is recognition by man. He says, when you pray, this is one of my favorite portions in the Bible. This is really, really good right here. When you pray, he says, go into your room. Now the King James says closet. I call it a prayer closet. Go into your room, close the door. Now, they didn't have a lot of rooms in those days. Um, like most, most um, houses only had one room or two. Now, richer people, they had more, okay? Sometimes they even had, you know, second floors and all that. But if a typical room or a typical house was something like this. It's a terrible square. Let me see if I can do that better, a rectangle. So let me try and draw something better here, see if I can get this here like this. Okay, that's better. So a typical uh, home might be something like this. And let's say this is a doorway right here. Okay, you know, right here you enter. That's it. That's a one room that you have. Or sometimes you may divide it up this way and have two rooms. And maybe the rooms actually held a lot of the animals. They bring their animals inside here so that people wouldn't steal them. And they lock them up and it'd be like a step down or something like a barn or a farm, not a barn, a farm, but a barn right in your house. And then what does he say in room then? Because most people didn't have their own room. Do you have your own room? Maybe you're sharing it with a brother or sister or something. But most families didn't have that. Well, basically, there was a storeroom usually where you had some objects. I don't know where it was. I'm just going to make this up here. Maybe there's a, a little area right here where you put some of the, of the storage right in this area right here. Okay. And he says, basically, maybe that's a storeroom that he's talking about. But find some secluded place, isolated place. Sometimes it's hard when you have larger families. You know, you can even go into the restroom, close the door, and just pray. I've done that a lot. And, and, but you find some secluded area. Find your, only, your own niche. I love um, going into the closet. Jesus said, when you go in, when you go into your room, shut the door. There's a door like right here. Shut the door and pray to your father, which is in secret. So he said, go into your room, shut your door, and then pray. That's the sequence. That's the order. And I love closets, by the way, in my life uh, as a, a growing Christian. My younger years, I did a lot where I'd find a closet. Say I'd be at my family's house, my mom's house. There was a closet <laughs> where I stayed in this room. I closed the door. I loved being there in the dark with God. Nothing scary about it. I, I, I just loved it. And oh my goodness, those are wonderful times. So that's where I started really meeting God. And he hung out with me. When you go in there, he'll be there. You may not see, you won't see him, but you may not hear him for a while. You may not feel his presence, but I can guarantee you, child, that he is right there present with you. Yes, that's the most exciting thing. As a matter of fact, my opinion, I've said this for years, the most exciting, the most exciting and the best place and definitely my favorite place in the world is a prayer closet. As many good places as there are out there, whether it be amusement parks or or church, or you know, just all over the place, anywhere you pick, business, wherever you're going to school, there's nothing like the prayer closet. So I, I literally have a couple places in my home, um, one especially my second floor in this one room, and I literally go in there and I shut the door. Nobody's in my house, I, I'm, I'm single. I love shutting that door because I remember that scripture every single time I go in there and then I shut the door and then God meets with me and I meet with God, I'm not kidding. He really, really, really does get close to you in there. And the more you hang out there, the more he'll come express himself and talk to you and love. Well, he already loves you, but he'll, he'll fill you with his love and everything. And then he teaches you. He teaches. That's where I got most of my knowledge of being, seek, uh, of being in the closet of prayer and praying. So I have a Bible. I have several Bibles there, but you can have a Bible. Bring it in. Find a, a, like a, a room in your house or some corner or some place where you can just go out there and hang out with God and start talking to them. I mean you. I mean, you start. If you haven't done it yet, find it. 
and do not quit doing that. If there's anything the devil hates more is you find in a place, a closet of prayer, a closet of prayer, or a room or something, a small place, and then just seek God right there. Even if you had to go under your bed or something, <laughs> that's kind of weird, but anywhere, it doesn't matter. And so I just want to encourage you, child, to find that place and seek the Lord in that place and make that the most important um, spot and the most important time that you can have in your life. Eventually, um, it really should be more time on your knees than any other time doing anything else. Now, right now we have school, you have school and all that, but you could get up early and then go to bed you know, as soon as you go to bed, find go go to bed early a little bit. So if you know you have to go to bed at nine, nine fifteen, ten, eleven, then you take some time and go spend time with the Lord. Boy, does that mean a lot to Him? You have no idea how much that means to Father, to the Father. I love this passage because of that. Because I have once I experienced the prayer closet and hanging out in the chambers, the bed chambers of God. I mean, my bed chambers or your closet of prayer, whatever your room. And then you just go do that. Oh my goodness, it's fantastic. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. He said, when you pray, go into the uh, into room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. He's, he's, he sees you. See, he sees and you can't see him. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. What's the rewards? Number one, your reward will be God himself. That's, that's more, than I, more than I can. That's it. That's my favorite reward that I'm actually encountering i'm experiencing god number two he answers your prayer he starts changing your life and your heart and all and then he also answers your prayers when you start praying for people then you, your reward will be very great and you can literally and actually change the world from your prayer closet you could pray for nations you can pray for all sorts of people groups you can pray for your relatives your family your friends to get saved to come to jesus you could pray for the needs of people. There's so many needs. Wow, you'll be getting busy. You say, well, what do I pray? I don't have anything to pray about. Oh, yeah, there's plenty to pray about. And it may start like this. You don't know what to say and all that. Just get in there and sit quietly. Then just sit there and say, I love you, Lord. And then have your own church service right there. Worship him, love him, sing to him. I do all that. And then, um, and then seriously, God the Father and Jesus Christ, by, their Holy, by the Holy Spirit, will come and fill you and you experience God. Um, he'll just fill you and talk to you and love you. And, and, you know, as you read the Bible, he'll open up the Bible to you in the prayer closet. I could talk about this a long time because the prayer closet is the most important thing in my life. Prayer is, is it. It's my way of connecting with my maker. So I think you've got something out of this, hopefully. And so make this an important, important decision in your life. Go find a place right now or sometime today if you have time. Go find a place and say, hmm, where can I make it? And then just kind of get your niche and then hang out there a lot, privately, secretly. And then just just stay there and go, okay, here I am. This is what you could do. Just go to him and say, here I am, Lord. I'm going to spend time with you each day. <laughs> I mean, if you knew what that meant to God, he's not lonely. He's not like, oh, look, this poor me. He wants to spend time with you because he really loves you. And then I, I can't explain it, but he'll come and he'll and you'll start getting very close to God. He'll change your life. Your life will be truly changed um, from that. If you spend some time with God and you go out in the world, you'll notice how your life is changing. Like, what is it? Because God is starting to get really close to you. You draw close to God. The Bible says he'll draw close to you. You start taking time to spend time with God. He will start talking to you and he'll talk to you through the day. A lot of times I pray and I didn't hear anything from God or whatever. I didn't feel anything. Throughout that day, God sp just speaks to me like more. It's like, oh, wow, because you spent time with him. He's hanging with you now. You kind of invite him into your life. It's good to do it in the morning, but whenever, and at night, try and do as much as you can. There you go. I almost want to beg you, go, go. <laughs> you know, seek the Lord in your prayer closet. It doesn't have to be a closet, remember. Just find a space, a room, a place to spend time with the Lord. God bless you.